when you get this little golden statue, you become a star. What's interesting about this is in the Egyptian culture, they also had a little statue that represented the god Ptah. And see, when a Egyptian king died, it was believed that his spirit went into the belt of Orion and he then became a star. Very interesting that we still follow after Egyptian gods. There's a lot of these different award shows that pop up throughout the year. There's the Grammys, the Emmys. They honor different aspects of the entertainment industry, but they are all one in the same. Now listen to what John Stewart and Stephen Colbert call this little image that they give to each other. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Good evening, godless sodomites. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing? I'm bringing the truth, John. We're in Hollywood, the belly of the beast. You can't just, you can't just read the prompter? I'm reading the prompter in here. You can read that pablum. Award show banter is not pablum. Reality television celebrates the human condition. <laughs> by illuminating what's extraordinary in the ordinary person. We're here to honor achievement in that category. By giving you a golden idol to worship. <laughs> Kneel before your God, Babylon! You see, Stephen Colbert and Jon Stewart know exactly where they stand in this city of Babylon. And it's very interesting, Jim Carrey also echoes the same sentiments at a different award show. I'm here tonight, as all of us are, to pay tribute to an American icon, an actor, a filmmaker, and truly one of my personal heroes, Mr. Clint Eastwood. I'm also here because the AFI is paying me 20 million and three dollars, making me the highest paid megalomaniacal boy king in all of Babylon. When Kathy Griffith was given an Emmy Award, she lets us know exactly who is her god now. We're gonna run the unedited version. What? And be warned for you people, you may be offended, maybe. <laughs> Watch. Now look, a lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. He didn't help me a bit. So all I can say is, suck it, Jesus. This award is my God now. You see, a lot of these celebrities are very aware of the fact that they are treated like gods. Well, this year, uh, and I'm, I'm thankful to the Oscar gods, uh, we have a great crop of films. You are, of course, nominated this evening. How does it feel being nominated tonight? Always an incredible honor. The, the other names of the gentlemen are all gods as far as, a, as far as a category concerned. It's very interesting when you look up where the word Oscar actually comes from. It's Scandinavian and Old English in its origin, and it means divine strength or divine spear. Divine, of course, means of, from, or like a god, and a spear is a weapon. Is it possible, brothers and sisters, that Satan is using these celebrities and movies as godlike weapons against us? Up until 1999, the Oscars was held at a building called The Shrine, which was founded by William Florence and Walter Fleming, two high-ranking Scottish Rite Freemasons. Hollywood has long been interested in Freemasonry. Gene Autry, John Wayne, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, C.C. DeMille, Clark Gable, Walt Disney, Oliver Hardy, you name it, the list goes on. Many celebrities have come out and admitted their connection to Freemasonry. In the book Morals and Dogma, written by Albert Pike, on page 321, Freemasons let us know exactly who their God is. 
It says Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name given to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, it is he who bears the light. And with it, splendors intolerable, blinds feeble, sensual, or selfish souls, doubt it not. When the movie Life is Beautiful was awarded at the Oscars, the camera quickly pulls back and shows a wide of the stage. When you pause it, you can see elements of Freemasonry built into the very set. If you look at a Masonic tracing board, a tool a Mason uses to teach and educate people involved in Freemasonry how to spot things that are connected to that organization, you can see the checkered floor, you can see the archways, you can see the sun motif in the background. All of these are letting you know exactly who owns this organization. When the Oscars moved from 1999 from the Shriners building to the Kodak Theater where it currently resides today, you can still see a lot of these elements of Freemasonry incorporated into the stage. You have the sun motif in the ceiling. You have the checkered flags upon the stage and the arches. Outside of the Kodak Theater, you have the gate to Ishtar and you have Babylonian gods put on the outside of the gate. The whole area surrounding the Kodak Theater was designed after a 1916 movie called Intolerance, where they recreated the very set that they had for Babylon. They have the same exact elephants. They have the same exact gate of Ishtar. They have the same exact Babylonian gods over the top of the gates. You see, if you go and visit the very home of the Oscars, where they hold it each year, you can see a plaque on the wall that says the Babylonian court. At the 2016 Oscars for Best Cinematography Award, the camera shows you the stage and you see an unmistakable Tower of Babel embedded into the design. You see, brothers and sisters, they know exactly where they are. While the world is wandering after all of these celebrities, we would do well to heed the very advice from Jesus' lips himself. In Luke 4, verse 8, it says, For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve.